Hello, thanks for joining me. Today is part five in our part five part series on understanding the characteristics and behavior of light. In part one, we discussed the brightness of a light source. Uh, in part two, we discussed its specularity. In part three, we discussed its light contrast relative to other light sources. And in part four, we discussed light placement and direction. The final component to our puzzle to understand the way that light behaves and be able to control and predict the uh, any individual light in an environment that we are shooting within is understanding its color temperature. Its color temperature or what you might call its white balance. Now we know a little bit about white balance from other shooting and from working with the white balance setting on our camera. We know that a light source is going to have some form of a color temperature built in. That means that it does not represent the full color spectrum of light because pure white light is actually made up of all colors. Just as in pigment, all colors mixed together become black. In, in light, all colors mixed together together become pure white light. When I'm missing part of the color spectrum, I now have a light source that has some kind of a color temperature to it. And this can shift along a yellow to blue paradigm. It can also shift from a magenta to green paradigm. And so you have to think of it as a four quadrant system and light can shift anywhere inside of that realm. So we don't just correct for light in terms of its color temperature. In other words, it's Kelvin, uh, because Kelvin only discusses the yellow to blue shift and doesn't say anything about the green to magenta shift. So a light source itself will have a certain color temperature, but then light sources themselves can actually have part of their color signature, or part of their color temperature attenuated out. So. If I'm shooting, uh, here's an extreme example, in an underwater uh, environment with an underwater housing on my camera, going underwater, the water itself attenuates out the warm part of the color spectrum until all that remains is the blue portion. This also happens when light passes through clouds. It attenuates out the warm part of the color spectrum and we're left with a cooler color temperature. Now, if I'm shooting in an environment where I have shade in one part of the frame and direct sunlight in another part of the frame, I now have two different color temperatures that I need to contend with. The same happens if I have a nice room and it's lit by some uh, color neutral uh, CFL lamps, but outside the window I have really nice sunlight that might be a little bit warmer. In that instance, again, I might have two different color temperatures, or maybe I have color neutral light outside that I have really warm incandescence inside. Again, I would have two different color temperatures. So one light source can actually change depending on what it passes through. And I can also have a scene with multiple light sources, each of which has its own color temperature. So how do I start working with this? Now, if I'm in an interior environment exclusively or an exterior environment with one light source exclusively, of course I can match that color. I can do some sort of a, uh, a customized white balance where I measure the color of light and I work with it. But what if I'm in a mixed lighting environment? Well, in that case, I have an issue. I can, of course, shoot with multiple color temperatures and try to take this section of the frame and adjust its color temperature relative to this section of the frame and adjust its color temperature, and that can get very tricky. There are some softwares, Capture One's a good one, where I can adjust the color temperature of the shadow area separately from the midtones. But something else that I might be able to do if I'm lighting a subject is figure out the color temperature of the lit environment and adapt my color temperature of my light source to match it. Then all I have to do is a custom white balance of that single color temperature and everything will look correct. A couple ways we can do that. If I'm working in the video world and I have a bi-color light source where I can adjust the color temperature uh, of that light source and I can match the room I'm in, I might have just a single color temperature that I can work with. But this is not a perfect solution. There are two reasons why. The first is bicolor lights mean that you have an amber, then a blue, an amber, then a blue, and that means the light source's brightness in total drops relative to the same light source with daylight balanced LEDs. Another reason is this only shifts the yellow to blue paradigm and says nothing about green to magenta. But what if I'm trying to match a room with fluorescent lamps, which can be very green? This will not help me. 
Another way that I might take a light source and match an environment is by gelling it. The flash that you have, if we're working with strobing equipment or flash equipment or daylight balanced LEDs, is going to be somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 degrees Kelvin. However, we have a concern. That's a pretty big range. And I have measured uh, flashes all the way inside of that range. So just saying that your flash is color neutral, it will be close, but it won't be exact. But it will be pretty stinking close. If I gel it, I can gel that flash to become uh, orange or green or blue, whatever I really want. There's lots of gel kits that I'd be able to attach it to. If I find a gel that matches my ambient light source, say I'm shooting in a really uh, kind of ugly church with really amber lights, I could put CTO or color temperature orange gel on my flashes, match the ambient light inside of the room, white balance to it, and create something with pure color temperature all the way through the frame. That would work really well. And I would have a single color temperature that I could work with. If I shot that really orange scene, left it really orange, but shot an 18% gray cloth, I could correct the color temperature in post and I'd be in perfectly good shape. So I can gel a color temperature, a, a creative controlled flash. I could gel a, a studio strobe. I could gel a flash. I can gel with larger gels, LED lighting equipment. That can happen. What else can I do? What if I kill the ambient light? Now this works for internal or interior spaces really well. If I am working with strobing equipment or flash equipment indoors, and I know that the ambient light is like a 30th of a second at f2, what happens if I shoot the picture at a 200th of a second at f8? Well, the ambient light will be so underexposed it will go black. Now, we talked about this in this series before where I might do that so that I control all of the shadows and all of the brightness and all of the background in the frame. But I also control color temperature. You're looking at an example of this right now. So I have two uh, lights that are lighting this scene. A primary light source that's a color temperature neutral or a 5,000 degree Kelvin video light on me and a video light. I'll just show it to you. It's right here. That's what's been lighting the background this whole time. It's another LED 5,000 degree Kelvin lamp that's lighting my background so that I get the background that I'm looking for. And both of those are 5,000 degree Kelvin. I can match those and get the color temperature I want. But what if I turn on an ambient light in the space like that? Now I have an amber light up here and it's creating this glow on me which means that the ambient light is seeping into the frame and it's polluting my color temperature. This is a difficult situation to work with. Well, now if I kill my uh, ambient lights like that, then I have only my uh, color controlled lights lighting the scene, I'm in good shape. But if I just left the ambient lights on and let my lighting sources be so much brighter than the ambient light, it just dies. And then I have a scene where I have all the same color temperature all the way through the frame. And that is so much easier to work with. So a light source that I can gel, a light source that I could change the color temperature of, uh, or a light source that is something that's so bright that I kill all other light sources makes my workflow and color management a lot easier. And that is how we start working with the color temperature of our light sources. I hope that this series has been educational and useful for you as you begin lighting your own uh, video and still shots. Uh, once we can control these five things, the brightness, specularity, light contrast, direction, and color temperature of our light sources, we create the look and feel we want in our video and still production. And having the exactness, having the, the creative control and the creative uh, footprint on our work is really what makes us artists. So I hope that you've enjoyed this series. Um, if you have, uh, then please give us a like, give us a subscribe. It means a lot to me. Uh, and check out some of the other videos. I hope that you enjoy them. If there's a subject matter in still or video that you want me to talk about, get in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks a lot.